today's lecture, we're going to continue our conversation about the heart. First thing I want to look at is the structure of the heart and talk about the coverings of the heart. So a few different terms we want to look at here. So there's something called pericardium that you see up here on the top left. And this is basically composed of two primary layers. As I go through these, you want to take a look at the picture on the bottom here. So the first primary layer is the fibrous pericardium. And this is uh, composed of dense connective tissue, a very, very strong layer. Uh, and you can see that down here. The next layer is the serous pericardium, and this is formed from two particular layers. And uh, the two layers are the parietal layer of the serous pericardium and then the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. Remember this parietal, visceral, we talked about these before, right, when we talked about serosa, if you recall that. So remember the parietal is always on the outside of the cavity, the visceral is always on the inside. Okay, now what I'd like to do is I would like to uh, focus on some things on the right over here. Talk about three different layers uh, that compose the heart wall themselves. So these are these three layers over here on the right, and they compose the heart wall. So you'll see them down here. The first is the epicardium, and again, this is the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. Then you have the myocardium, and this consists, consists of the cardiac muscle itself. And this muscle is arranged in circular spiral patterns. Uh, if you read in your text, you'll actually see this. Then finally, I'm going to talk about the endocardium, and this is basically um, a layer of connective tissue, and it lines the, the inside or the internal parts of the walls of the heart. Okay, I'd like to focus on the cardiac skeleton a little bit too. And what this is is this is basically um, basically dense connective tissue that surrounds all four valves of the heart. There's a lot of functions of the cardiac skeleton. And, or this, you know, this dense connective tissue. So the four I want to focus on are these. So number one, they anchor the valve. Uh, number two, they prevent overdilation of the valve openings. In other words, it prevents the valve from opening too much. Three, the main point of insertion for cardiac muscle. And then four, it blocks the direct spread of electrical impulses. The heart makes given sounds. As you know, we talked about this in lecture a little bit the other day. Uh, it'll make a lub-dub sound. And this is the sounds of the valves uh, closing. The first sound, the lub, right, that you see here, these are actually the AV valves that are closing. The second sound, the dub, are the semilunar valves closing. So that's how we get that characteristic uh, lub-dub sound that you associate with a heartbeat. We talk about heartbeats, about you know 70 to 80 beats per minute at rest. Uh, this varies dramatically. So some people, their heart rates are over 100 uh, beats per minute. Not usually a good thing, but yeah, they could be. Uh, if you have Olympic athletes, they could be as low as like 50 beats per minute, or sometimes down into the 40s, believe it or not, because uh, their hearts are more efficient at pumping blood throughout their body. There's two things we talk about here. So uh, you always say, you know, my blood pressure is 100 over 60 or something like that. And there's two uh, different parameters that make up that number. So there's the systolic pressure, which is the contra contraction uh, of a heart chamber. And there's the diastolic uh, pressure, which is the expansion of a heart chamber. Um, these are things that you know we'll talk about more later in our course. Okay, I'd also like to turn our focus to the blood supply of the heart itself. We spoke the other day in class how... Um, the heart is pumping blood that's oxygenated throughout the body, right, to you know maintain different cells, different organs. But the heart itself self has to have uh, oxygenated blood, and this is achieved by structures that are called the coronary arteries that you'll see here. And these are the arteries that actually supply blood uh, to the walls and the tissues, the cells of the heart itself. There's two different arteries: uh, the right coronary artery, the left coronary artery, uh, and they arise from the base of the aorta. At the base of the aorta. Uh, you see them here in the picture to the right. They further branch into different uh, arteries, and we'll talk about those a little bit later on in our course, uh, specifically in lab when we dissect our heart. So for right now, we'll keep it at right and left coronary arteries and realize that these are carrying oxygenated blood to the heart itself. 